Now, let's begin with understanding the Yellow Book 1999. Under the Yellow Book, the contractor is responsible for the design and the execution of the works, that is, it provides a single point of responsibility for the design and construction of the project. This type of contract is commonly used for infrastructure projects where the contractor takes on more risk than under the red book. The yellow book is divided into several clauses, each dealing with a specific aspect of the contract. These include general provisions, obligations and responsibilities of the employer, the contractor, and the engineer, as well as provisions for tests on completion, variations, claims, disputes, and more. In the coming videos, as we delve deeper into the Yellow Book 1999, we'll focus on some of the key clauses that often come into play in construction projects. We'll discuss their implications and how they can be managed effectively. Each of these clauses has its own complexities and nuances, and understanding them in depth is crucial to managing FIDIC contracts effectively. We'll explore these clauses in more detail in the coming videos, including practical case studies and examples to illustrate how they work in real-world scenarios. We'll start with an overview of Clause 1, which is the general provisions. This clause sets the groundwork for the contract and defines key terms used throughout the contract. We'll discuss the purpose of this clause and its importance in the contract. We'll start with an overview of Clause 1, which is the general provisions. This clause sets the groundwork for the contract, and defines key terms used throughout the contract. We'll discuss the purpose of this clause and its importance in the contract. The first one is definitions. This section is pivotal as it provides clarity by defining key terms and phrases used throughout the contract. By establishing clear definitions, it minimizes ambiguities and potential disputes over interpretations. Terms like contract, letter of acceptance, employer's requirements, and contractor's proposal are all defined here, ensuring that whenever these terms are referenced in the contract, all parties have a shared understanding of their meaning. The next one is interpretation, communications, and law and language. These sections lay down the foundational rules for how the contract should be read and understood, how parties should communicate, and the governing law and language of the contract. This is crucial for ensuring smooth communication and understanding between the parties. Third one is document management. Sections like priority of documents, care and supply of documents, and rules around errors in the employer's requirements, as well as the use of each party's documents, ensure that there is clarity on which documents take precedence in case of discrepancies, and how documents should be handled and treated. Next one is confidentiality and compliance. The contract also touches upon the importance of keeping certain details confidential, and the necessity for all parties to comply with prevailing laws. This is crucial for maintaining trust and ensuring legal compliance. And the final one is liability. The section on joint and several liability provides clarity on how liabilities are shared, which is essential for understanding the risks and responsibilities of each party.